What's going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Upcoming Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. So my global players out there are probably very hyped right now because tonight is the night that this man, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, finally makes it into the game and obviously his drop time will vary depending on where you live what your time zone is so it might be tomorrow morning for some people but it's very close and that's exciting because he's probably one of the most highly anticipated Dokkan Fest to ever come to global possibly the most highly anticipated and there's a good reason for that first of all the character is just dope. I mean, he was one of the most badass characters in Dragon Ball Super, but also the unit itself is just fantastic. It's a very, very strong unit, as you guys will see in a second. And his category happens to be one of the best categories in the game, the category that he leads, the Pure Saiyans category, which we'll take a look at in a second as well. So. Overall, just a really, really great unit. You will want to get your hands on him, but for those of you who are a little bit on the fence about whether or not you should spend your hard-earned stones on his banner when it drops tonight or tomorrow morning, again, depending on where you live, then hopefully this video will help you make that decision by the end. We're gonna go over the unit itself, go over the possible banner that we can expect to see on Global, as well as the category. All right, guys, <laughs> so enough of me talking enough of the intro let's jump right into this video now starting with the unit himself he looks like that but let's actually take a quick look at his skills and his links and all those things because those are a little bit more important to determine how good a unit is so here we go in terms of his leader skill it's a pure saiyans leader and he gives pure saiyans category units key plus three hp and defense plus 170 percent and attack plus 130 percent so I wish that they would have given him attack and defense plus 170%, HP plus 130% because you always want a little bit more damage out of the categories, especially for categories like this with very, very strong, hard-hitting units. You know, it would be awesome to see them get 170% boost, but you know what? That could be part of the reason why they didn't give him 170% attack because it might be a little bit too OP considering how overpowered a lot of these units are already in this category, so can't complain too much about that. His super attack causes immense damage to the enemy and greatly lowers defense. Gamma Burst Flash, it looks really cool by the way. If you guys want to go check it out, I'm sure there are videos out there. Uh, for his passive, it's Stimulated Pride, attack plus 120% and defense plus 60%, so already good off the bat. And then he launches two additional attacks and defense plus 7% with each attack performed up to 70%. So he is guaranteed to launch at least three attacks every single turn up to four if you have additional attack in its potential system so if that activates it can actually get up to four attacks per turn and he also gets more tanky with every single attack that he launches up to 70 percent additional defense so in total after 10 attacks which is pretty easily achieved because he attacks so many times every turn you will have 120 percent attack and 130 percent defense so it gets very tanky by the end of that and he will evolve when conditions are met. And the conditions are, actually we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so conditions, when the conditions are met, he will evolve. His links are Super Saiyan, Warrior Gods, Prodigies, Royal Lineage, Prepare for Battle, Tournament of Power, and Fierce Battle. So very solid links. I mean, of course, Super Saiyan 10% is very common. Fierce Battle is very common. Prepare for Battle is one of the most common key links. So he'll almost always have that activate. And Royal Lineage, Prodigies, these are a little bit more niche, but still good links and uh, he will be able to link up with a lot of the good top tier units in his category so you don't have to worry about that as far as categories go he has a ton of categories man universe survival saga realm of gods pure saiyans full power representatives of universe 7 enhanced transformation which isn't available on global yet uh, i believe all these other ones oh full power is not available on global yet too either so these four are currently available on global universe survival saga um realm of gods pure saiyans and representatives of universe 7 and he's optimal on every single one of those categories so if you guys are looking to complete any of those category teams then you definitely want to pick this guy up because he is just amazing for all of those teams and uh go down to his stats they're solid high hp attack could be a little bit higher if i'm being honest I, I would like to see a little bit higher attack but you know what a lot of agl units don't have super high attacks it's usually the tech types and the str types that have the highest attack so it's not like it's kind of standard, but I would have liked it if his attack stat was a little bit higher. It would have been able to, you would have been able to push out a little bit more damage from him, but you know what? That's okay. Defense is good as well. So good defense, good HP, okay attack. I'm going to move down here. Okay, some extra details. His 12 key multiplier is 150%. His evolution is 30% chance. So this is the um, condition. That, you know, when I say conditions are met, he will evolve. So this is the condition. Evolution, 
30% chance to evolve starting from the fourth turn from the start of the battle. So that's all. That's the only condition there is. You just have to get to the fourth turn of the battle, and then every turn he's back, he has a 30% chance to evolve. So it's all random. It's kind of like the great ape transformation. You can't really do anything about it. It's not like you can get to a certain like HP level, and then he'll look guaranteed. He'll be guaranteed to evolve or anything like that. Unfortunately, it's not like that. But um, there it is. That's the that, that's the condition. The additional attacks from Vegeta's passive skill can't be super attacks. So yeah, um, like I said before, it's guaranteed three attacks per turn for the two additional attacks can't be supers, which kind of sucks. I, I mean, maybe it would have made him too powerful. I don't know. Maybe they tested it and they were like, that he would have been too strong if he could do up to four supers in a turn, but I would have liked that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> However, if he gets an additional attack from hidden potential upgrades, it can be a super attack, which is standard. His additional defense plus 7% with each attack performed is calculated separately, Ooh, and resulting in a increase of 11.2% per attack performed for a total. Ooh, okay. Actually, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Now I seem a little unprepared, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was just like additive, right? But it looks like it's multiplicative. Multipl multi that's a hard word to say, multiplicative? Yeah, anyways, uh, it's calculated separately. So in total, after 10 attacks, you're looking at a 172% defense boost as opposed to just 130%, like I said. So he's gonna be even more tanky than I expected. So he's gonna be, he's gonna be mad tanky. He's gonna be like tanking a lot of attacks for double digit damage, uh, which is fantastic, okay. And um, this guy and this guy can be linked, and uh, they will activate all of each other's link skills. Okay, cool. So if you have one that's transformed and one that's not transformed, like your friend and your own uh, SSP Vegeta, then they can actually link together and activate all of each other's links, which is awesome. And let's take a look at the evolved form now, the actual SSB Vegeta. So he starts off as actually just a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, but they move down here and he becomes Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta after he evolves, you know, once you meet those conditions, passing the fourth turn um, with a 30% chance to evolve. He will now get immense damage to the enemy and massively lowers defense. Let's see if they say what massively lowers defense means. Okay, so massively lowers defense means he will lower the enemy's defense by 80% for three turns, holy crap. Okay, that's 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 wow, madness, that's madness, okay. 80% <laughs> defense, his passive is now is now attack and defense plus 130% at start of turn, launches two additional attacks and chance to perform a critical plus 10% with each attack performed up to 70%. So after like two or three turns, he will have a 70% chance to critical. This man is gonna be critting left and right. It's gonna get getting a ton of crits off um, and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> it's gonna be great. And everything else stays the same, um, you know, link skills, categories, all those things. So basically the main difference here is that he gets an additional attack above of 10%. He gets uh, more defense off the bat and he also has a up to 70% chance to critical after launching seven attacks, which is very easy to do considering he gets a guaranteed three attacks per turn right so fantastic fantastic unit really cool transformation let's see if there's any information that i'm missing here the, the additional attacks from vegeta's passive field can't be super attacks if you get additional attack from uh, hidden potential upgrades it can't be super attack okay so same thing as the other form that we were just talked about so there's the card itself guys um he is very strong <laughs> like i said before transformation he can deal decent damage because he gets 120 percent attack I wouldn't even say decent, I would say like solid, like very good damage, 120% attack off the bat, and then he gets super tanky after you get 10 attacks off. And then you go down here to his transformation where he's gonna hit hard, he's gonna tank well, and he's gonna be critting left and right. So, um, and also the transformation is dope. Like it's just a cool transformation. His, his line is, this is my full power. Okay, he, they could have gone a little bit more, they could have been a little bit creative than that, but you know what, it's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. So there you go, guys. Go. Um, what am I trying to say? There you guys go. There you guys go. <laughs> that is the card, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. I would love to have him. Everybody would be lucky to have him. So best of luck to you guys if you're summoning. Now let's move over to the potential banner. And of course, as always, we're taking a look first. Or I mean, as we're, just, we're just taking a look at the JP banner because that's really the only reference we have for what the global banner will look like. So this is what the JP banner looked like. And honestly, I don't expect too many changes, if any at all, on the global side. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about why. So I'm gonna go down here. Here are all the featured units that you can expect to see or that were at least on the JP side. SSB, Vegeta, STR, Jiren, AGL Dispo, Physical Rebrand, Tech 17, STR Ultimate Gohan, uh, STR Topo, and two SRs who we don't really care about. So the main thing we care about here are the seven featured SSRs. And 
I mean, I would say it's a very solid banner. It's not one of the best banners we've ever seen, but it is a very good banner. We have three category leads in SSB Vegeta, STR Jiren, and STR Ultimate Gohan. And we have some solid fillers as well. This, ST, um, this STR Topo is one of the best support units out there, especially if you're running Universe Survival Saga. Uh, what else? Realm of Gods, maybe? I think he's on Realm of Gods, too. I, I can't remember, but I think he is on Realm of Gods. And of course, after this, all this stuff drops, we'll also be getting Jiren's Dokkan event as well, where you can awaken Topo to God of Destruction form finally, so he will be at his full potential. And uh, same thing with Dispo. Dispo is a really, really strong card, and he will get his awakening on Global as well, with the drop of this banner, as well as uh, Jiren's Dokkan event. And Tech 17 is actually, I think a lot of people pay a lot of attention to the 18, but he's actually very good in his own right. Of course, he can't be run at the same time as the physical 17, which kind of sucks, but if you're on a team where physical 17 17 isn't really an option or you guys don't have him then tech 17 is a great replacement for him physical rebrand she's okay too <laughs> she's actually not as bad as some people probably give her credit for but um she's probably definitely the worst featured ssr of the pool but still i i think it's a very solid banner um i don't expect too many changes mainly because str ultimate gohan hasn't been featured for a while and they're also going with this tournament of power theme which makes a lot of sense considering you know the unit that's being featured the new the dokkan fest that it's for so I think they are going to keep the Dispo, the Rebrian, the 17, and the Topo, and uh, I'm totally okay with it. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys think the banner will change at all. If you do, what do you think is going to be replaced? But I personally don't think anything's going to change. I think this is the banner that we can see, expect to see tonight at 10.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or tomorrow morning, depending on your time zone again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is going to be the banner, so it's not bad. It's really not bad. Now, last thing before we get out of here is the category itself. This is the Pure Saiyans category, and it is a massive category, guys. Like, really, really huge. So, let's just stay quiet for a second and scroll through. I mean, I mean if you guys just saw this and were like, Tiger, that's like not a lot of units at all, and they're not even good, that good units. Just wait, just wait. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> This category is absolutely massive. There are like, I don't even know. Um, I didn't count it, but look, uh, over a hundred, over a hundred units in this category or something. I, I didn't count it, but it's it's huge, guys. It's it's absolutely stupid. I, I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but it's one of the best categories for new players, like beginners who are new to the game but don't have a lot of units. This is one of the best categories for you guys, and he is SSB Vegeta is one of the best leaders for you to try to get because since the category is so massive and a lot of these units are so common, it's easy for almost anyone to put together a, a team of six pure saiyans and run this category with no problems and probably beat every single dokkan event at least in this game with no issue so he is a fantastic leader for new players for beginners so if you're one of those people you don't have a ton of units definitely definitely consider summoning for him because i think he's just going to do a lot of great things for you but uh, aside from that let's take a quick look at what like strong characters in here like what what exciting characters in here and there are a lot man there are a lot of 120 leads there are a bunch of category leads and a bunch of lrs in here as well okay ssj3 bardock catches my eye here we go um we have ssj4 goku ssj4 vegeta um lr broly is there we have lr majin vegeta up here somewhere as well i think i missed him where is he where is he okay lr majin vegeta is right there um, going down here, we have LR Bardock, who possibly is coming to global with the Rising Dragon Carnival banner, the Double Rates SSR banner. I'm not really sure, because he was featured on JP. I hope he's featured on global as well, but it could be, you know, they could change it up if they want to, so we'll have to see, but... I do expect him to be on Global very soon. We have SSJ4 Full Power Goku in here as well, who is very, very good. Of course, he's not available on Global yet, but he will be, so this is kind of for like the future. Uh, we have the Transforming AGL Goku. We have, what else? I mean, K K Khalifla, Kale, uh, <laughs> you know, that's always good. Always a good thing. Mass Saiyan is very strong too. Uh, SSJ3 Angel Goku, Int uh, Blue Vegeta. L the LR free to play Goku. <laughs> I don't, not the most exciting, but still, still he's there. Uh, we have the the AGL Turles, who is amazing. Um, 
yeah, man, guys, like, <laughs> this, I, I mean, these, these blue Gokus and blue Vegetas are all really good as well. LR SSJ3 Goku, how can I forget about him? Maybe because he never shows up for me in summons. Maybe because I can't pull him after thousands of stones trying. But anyways, <laughs> SSJ3 Goku, the EZA one, who is amazing if you fully EZA him as well. Um, some Bardocks, pretty much every Bardock in here. Um, but that's it, you guys. Like, basically any Saiyan that is, you know, a pure Saiyan, like, he is a pure Saiyan blood, he or she is of pure Saiyan blood, then they'll be in this category, which is why this is such a massive, massive category. And uh, like I said in the beginning, man, one of the best categories in the entire game. If you don't have a lot of units, you're a beginner, you definitely want this guy. And if you're not, like, you know, if you're a veteran player, you've been playing for a long time like me, like, you still want him because the category is just so damn strong, especially if you have some of those LRs, those category leads, and things like that. So guys, there's the... There's the overview, there's the banner overview, the unit overview, the, the category overview. I've given you pretty much all the information that I personally can't have and I personally feel like you guys need to make a decision about whether or not you should summon for him. But uh, if I'm being honest, you should summon. Like you should summon for him because everybody should at least you know, take a shot at pulling this guy because just, just because of how good he is, how good his category is and all those things. Of course, I mean, if you have another unit on the way that you just are just a bigger fan of that you really really like yeah i can't fault anybody for skipping it's fine right but i wouldn't recommend it i would recommend everybody to someone this is this is one of these times one of the one of the only videos i've done like this where i can like confidently wholeheartedly recommend everybody to summon on this banner on global and um yeah that's all i really have to say guys <laughs> i'm personally going to be summoning you guys should summon as well let me know in the comments down below if you're summoning and if so how many stones you're spending and uh that's all i have to say for today guys hope you liked the video hope you found the video useful hope, I, I just really hope that it helped you in some way make a decision either you know to summon or not to summon hopefully to summon but you know who knows whatever man you guys can do whatever you want with this information that's all i have to say for today as always if you guys like the video make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel you'll like what you see make sure to hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it also hit that notification bell so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all of my latest content but that's all for me today guys hope you guys have a fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out